Everybody, welcome back to Level Up Loading Fight Feeling Space Bags with your truly Shay. So, I actually have a special treat for you guys. Um, I don't know if you watched my last episode, but I did mention that I was going to be incorporating a series on my channel that was going to be devoted strictly for women's health related issues. And so today I have a special guest with me here today, Sierra. Hey, y'all. <laughs> you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, my name is Sierra. I know you from grammar school. This goes ways back. <laughs> Two kind of days. Um, I have a small business. I'm the owner and CEO of Wasted by Juicy. I create and sell custom waste beads. Um, what else do you want to know? Um, I mean, that's that's fine. Also, make sure that you give me your um, social media because I'm going to put that on the screen and everything as well. Yeah, you guys can follow me on Facebook. I have a business page under the name of Wasted by Juicy. That's W A I S T D. By one word, Wasted by Juicy with two Y's. I'm going to put it on the and, screen um, so they ain't even going to have to worry about spelling. Yeah, TikTok, <laughs> everything's going to be the same handle. You guys can find me on all platforms under the same name. Okay, perfect. Well, Sierra, thank you so much for being here today. Like I said, I'm this pleasure. is something that is not always talked about, regardless of what spectrum of health we discuss and people are a little bit more quiet about it and I get it because it's very intimate you know it's a very intimate okay. subject so I thank you and I very much appreciate you for being yeah. able to be transparent so what yeah. are we discussing today Miss Sierra um I just wanted to talk about mental health um especially in our black community with our black women because it's frowned upon a lot I mean mm -hmm. people are embarrassed to ask for help sometimes I know for me, an example, I hit a lot of my uh, mental health. Just because you don't want people to like, you know, put the stereotype or this quotation on you anyway. So you tend to hide it or we tend to like self-medicate or, you know, yes. drown ourselves in stuff that really don't matter. We should be focused on the, the topic at hand, which is like mental health. You know, um, me, myself, I suffer with PTSD, got a little okay. bit of depression and PTSD. Okay. Uh, most of it stems from my childhood traumas. So, you know, All of and, us. That, and that bothers like a lot of people don't realize your childhood could, you know, affect your adult life. You know, I'm 33. A lot of this stuff happened to me when I was a teenager or even younger than that. Yeah. But I still carry it with me, you know. And unless you really get the real help that you need, it can it can really affect your life. So, um, I think us as women, we need to start being more supportive towards each other. And like coming up with these little groups like you're doing, I think this is a great opportunity for women like myself who is kind of shy about speaking to therapists or speaking to, you know, anybody about it in particular. Mm -hmm. It's just a good way to kind of vent and get, you know, get other people's perspective on it so that you're more comfortable and not ashamed of what you want to Definitely. I like what you said with the whole childhood trauma. I think a lot of people think because they brush it under the rug that it's not it's not going anywhere. It's still it under doesn't the rug. go away. That rug getting bigger and bigger and bigger because of the simple fact that, you know, you, yes, you might be, think you're over it, but like you said, that's how you kind of go into self-medication and all other type of ways of coping mechanisms that we tend to use Absolutely. so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I know for me, like you said, like brushing under the rug, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if, if you think about it, you'll be wondering like why a lot of stuff is going wrong in your life and it stems back to that trauma, that yep. mental health issue. Like, well, why is this happening to me? You know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing this right. I'm doing that right. Mm -hmm. It's because you got to heal from inside. You know, it's not a, it's not an outside look. Um, and for me, I get this a whole lot when I tell people like, I am going through PTSD. They, Cause you smile all the time. Cause you laugh, you know, you're silly. You know, I'm silly. I crack a joke every day on, yes. on Facebook. Yes. But definitely. sometimes <laughs> it's a mask. I know it's, it's a mask sometimes, you know, and, um, I'm tired of hiding it. Like, I want to find yeah. like-minded individuals who I can relate to that I'm not afraid to talk about because like mm -hmm. you said, it can help other people. Me coming forward may bring, open up a way for everybody to be able to feel comfortable with their uh, disorder because it ultimately is a disorder. Yes. Yeah. If people really don't put enough respect on it when it comes to depression because I feel like it's can be an invisible ailment. You know, like if your arm is broke or if, you know, you have a disability where you literally can't 
function, mo you know, your mobility is affected. Exactly. People see that and they're like, oh my God, I have grace for them. I have compassion for them. I have mercy exactly. for them. But if my internal mind is not in a place where I even want to get out the bed or I'm thinking about my next, my next drink or my next porn. Spare the moment thing. Whatever, you just whatever, exactly. whatever hookup or whatever thing it is that I'm using in that moment exactly. to try to make myself feel anything exactly. that's not seen and that's judged so harshly i mean in the world in general but definitely in our community and i just Absolutely. i'm it's something that we need to talk more about for sure Absolutely. um with me i'll tell you a little bit backstory about me um i grew up in predominantly black family you know i'm not it's necessarily about the topic no more so i don't mind sharing with you guys um i had drug addicted parents and okay you know, I grew up with my grandparents, but they were more on a strict level. So a lot of things was kind of hidden under the rug or yeah. you're not supposed to do that, you know, more point the finger and try instead of like coaching you through it and walk through it. Um, so that's where minds come from. And see, with my boys, like I got teenagers, so I try to give them an open door policy so that they can talk to me about whatever, because it will affect you. Wait, are they all teenagers already? My last one is 11, so I have Oh, my God. Time is flying. Yeah. Girl, some boys. <laughs> um, but we do, like, mental health days. For example, I think what's really great about the school system where I'm living is they have mental health days. So they allow the kids to, like, miss school. And, and instead of them being, being you know, marked absent, it's a mental health day. And I support really? it. Where was that? Where was that, baby? Where was yeah, that? Kids get under pressure too. Kids have pressures too. They go through things just like adults do. So for real, I think it's an awesome way for them to be able to to vent. And they have like counseling for them at the school and sessions when they have like like when they have the mass shootings and stuff like that. They they give the kids opportunity to come in and talk to counselors because it does affect the kids that didn't get harmed too, just as well as the kids that did. You know, you know, well, the last one was in Nashville, at least the last one that I was aware I of. I heard about and it. I'm like, this is getting, I mean, it's always been close to home, but it's just like, you don't understand it until you start to know the, the families of the people affected. Exactly. And Nashville is such a small, it's like a big, small city. So it's like, everybody is interconnected. And it's these poor kids are literally traumatized. And that's where, like, like you said, the childhood PTSD comes in. Like that is Absolutely. traumatizing. It really is. We live in, I live in Minnesota, so this is where George Floyd got killed. And um, Philando Castile, as well as Dante Wright. And Dante Wright's killing actually happened across the street from my kids' high school. So they were really affected by it. Like, you may not look at it physically like they're telling you they're affected, but the way they acting out in school or, you know, the peer pressure yeah. about the other kids, all of that stuff ultimately boils down to them being affected by the incident. That's which causes right. trauma, you know. So these poor me, babies um, don't even know how to poor babies don't even know how to process this type of crazy. I know. And this is like we think, okay, they kids. Oh, they don't you know how back in the day they're like they kids, they don't know no better, you know. But they have minds, they have thoughts, they have feelings just like we yes. do. So it's mm -hmm. important to talk to people about it. And I um I had an incident growing up when I was suicidal. You know, that's something that I used to be embarrassed to talk about, but I talk about it more often with my kids because sometimes kids don't know how to come to you and tell you that yeah. stuff. So um, with me, like I said, I got an open doors policy with my boys and I don't care. Nothing's off limit with us. Like if something's affecting you, even if I say something wrong to affect you, mm -hmm. let it be known. Like don't hold that in and bubble it in because it just caused you more trauma at the end of the day. You know, I really love, I feel like this generation, like my generation, uh, we're trying to get it better. Like we trying to break some curses. And I know our parents and, the, and their parents was just doing the best they could with what they had. But we have so much exposure to so much different information. I feel like our generation is really trying to like just be better and and not keep on passing on traditions of trauma and and just Absolutely. you know what I mean. Like we didn't have social media growing up, so anything that we were seeing, <laughs> girl, God. was like around the neighborhood and stuff like that. So being affected by social media is another reason. It's a lot of kids depressed. It's a lot of people depressed. And for me, I used to feel like this in, in myself. Like social media will make you depressed. Yeah, especially if, like you're not where you want to be in life, and you sit here like comparing, and that puts you in a, in a damper mood. That puts you in a bad uh, mind space. So, I think social media has a lot to do with the reason a lot of people are depressed as well. You know, they don't know how to log off and really deal with themselves and deal with everything that's in front of them. 
just mindlessly scrolling, mindlessly scrolling. Exactly. Filling yeah. your mind with all these negative thoughts. And then when you get off, you feel less of a person. You feel it. You know, my situation could be better or, yeah. you know, it just gives you so much room to compare and contrast. And it, it just makes you even sadder at the end of the day. You know? Comparison is definitely the thief of joy. And like, like you said, like with social media, like I do think that social media is, is a, playing a huge part in like the depression and the comparison and just, you know, a lot of those negative things. But I do think it has some positivity because I know for a fact yeah. I've done a lot. I've learned a lot. Yeah, about, they have motivational people that you can follow too. That's, yeah. you know, just can be as, as positive as the negative people stuff that you follow. And so yeah. I do agree on that part. I try my best to get my, my news feed looking like something that is going to be uplifting for you me. You can image your future out of them. You know, yeah. you can see your future. I don't want to see anything that is toxic. I mean, don't get me wrong now. <laughs> we love we a love little, little tea. <laughs> we, love, we love a little tea. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. But you know, overall, I want my my stuff to to be something uplifting. Exactly. Um, because when you we don't really realize how what we digest really has a huge effect on us. Like I've even stopped listening to certain things because it was changing my my viewpoints on how I was the music the opposite, the opposite sex. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm. Not I'm older than all these women that's on this radio. Let's just talk exactly. about it. But somehow because I'm in, ingesting this this you know negative connotation and this you know city girl mentality and the you know sure. all this other stuff, I'm looking yes. at men differently. And I had to check myself like, hold on, sis, these are these are your nieces. You supposed to be telling them what to how to go and work in the world not them Absolutely. dictating how you're handling me and so i had to slow down and listen to a lot of things and just you know be a little bit more yeah. intentional exactly be intentional yeah. that's why i tell my kids like raising boys it's kind of yeah. hard because this music is there for them they degrading women and they're talking about drugs and guns 24 7 so in their mind this is what reality wants to accept and i try to teach my boys like that's not how you got to go. And a lot of that stuff, that music is poison. Yeah. It's poison. It's talking about death and killing yourself and being suicidal and, you know. Do you realize that, like, no other culture has that type of music for real? I do realize that. I do realize that. Is that is the most terrifying thing to me. Because, like, somebody mentioned this. And I was just like, I have never heard... Uh, I mean, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know. Maybe they right. about it. <laughs> But I don't think that there are any Spanish speaking songs about, uh, you know, big booties and guns and drill, drill. Kill the ops. You know what I mean? I mean, they there yeah. are probably now because of emulating our culture. But like, exactly. in general, that is that's not that was not the norm. They're talking about love. They're talking about happiness and celebration and fun. You know, you know the white people talking Remember about back in the day, our R&B talked about shivery and. Being men and being faithful, and I love only you and girls yes. taking in the rain. Listen, nowadays it's just like everything is about drill and trying to uh protect your feelings or hide your feelings and not to care. There's no care attitude about everything. Yes, everybody's so, so cavalier. Absolutely, that's the word. Yep. So I mean, um, I don't know. I I feel like I go to therapy. So one thing that's helped me, okay, is like going to therapy, talk to my counselor, and. For me, I have a big problem with trying to save everybody, even though I like go through my own depression and stuff. Yeah. I know what it feels like. So and inside of me, I'm feeling like I'm doing a great thing by even though I'm in a dark time, I can share and put light in somebody else's life with my my uh my trauma, my trials, everything I've been through in my experience, you know. Mm -hmm. So with me, um, I have little sisters, I got a lot of girlfriends that come to me for advice and Sometimes I really need somebody just to talk to too and vent and you know mm -hmm. not be that 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 warrior all the time for everybody else, but you know to be able to share and still have my safe space as well. You know, I, I have a question for you, and only because mm -hmm. I have you know struggled with that myself in the past. Do you allow or reach out to people to do that? I like, have my tribe, so like I have okay. my circle. But okay, a lot good. of the women in my circle they don't relate a lot. Cause they didn't, they didn't have an upbringing. So, you know, they're, they're open to listening and, you know, to say what they would do, but mm -hmm. to touch on that subject in, in an in-depth moment, I don't think I have that per se. You know, I am like the strong one out of my, my tribe or whatever. Got you. So, 
but I think it helps. I mean, I've been talking to my one of my siblings. We do a lot of FaceTime. You know, mm-hmm. We live eight hours away, but it's therapeutic to me just to her to just give me the floor sometimes. You know, let me vent. And what's this? I never really been through that, but this is what, you know, how I feel about it. Or, you know, just to be understood instead of just always holding it in, internalizing it all. And it probably helps her to understand you more and vice versa. You know what I mean? Like maybe exactly. she might not be able to relate, but it's giving her insight on to, you know, how how and why you do what you do. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yep. And I think um, like when I went to the doctor about a years ago, everybody think about medication and mm-hmm. this and that. I started finding my own path, finding my own ways like meditating or you know, doing yoga or I'm into spirituality, as you know. And so a lot of that, it helps me heal my trauma without self-help or self-medicating all the time. You mm-hmm. know, um, just finding ways to cope in a healthier way for me has been more beneficial to me than the way I used to do it. You know, the partying, the drinking, the smoking weed and, you know. Girl, I, I recently stopped drinking myself. Um, I saw that, girl. Congratulations. Thank you, girl. I'm over here with my yeah, little. Tell me my how little, to make a mocktail. My little water. <laughs> this is actually sparkling water right now. But yes, girl, okay. I've been and and you know what? Honestly, I have not felt so good. I cannot even describe to you how good it feels. But like you said, like we look, we look for things, and, and whether it's drinking, like I don't think I'm not saying I stop drinking because there's something wrong with drinking. Exactly. It's the way you use it. Exactly. It's not to say I'm never gonna drink ever in my life again. But when you realize that it's a. a what do you call it, like a coping mechanism or, yeah. you know, a scapegoat for you? Exactly. Or even just a habitual thing where it's like, um, okay, I'm off work. Now I got to drink. Do you even want to drink? Exactly. Is it even a reason to be drunk right now? And like- that goes back to talking about how social media can be so peer pressuring because yep. that's what the norm is doing. Like, oh, yep. turn up, you know, everybody got to have a drink or just a, your way of unwinding don't always have to be revolved around. Exactly. Or, you know read i paint my nails i'm into self-care so i'll find little different ways to you know yeah just pour back into yourself i'm sorry i hear you oh said, basically just pour you just pouring back into yourself yeah, instead of exactly. just devoting it to you know a, a substance or an activity actually putting it into yourself exactly yeah. I, I definitely um can relate for sure because i really did not know <laughs> I did not really understand how long it had been since I had extended amounts of sobriety. And when I really sat back and looked at that, I was like, what am I, what am I hiding from? What am I running from? What am I masking? You know what I mean? So for me, myself personally, just taking that break and just being sober, being in my full right mind all the time has been mm-hmm. extremely helpful for me to yeah. address address those traumas, those kid traumas. Yeah. Girl, I've been having conversations. I know my mom and my daddy is like, why are you calling me? Like, <laughs> well, you know, actually, when you did this. Exactly. You know, just- and I think that's what's been happening for me, too. Like, um, when you are sober, when you got that clear that clear mind, and yeah. everything is starting to make sense. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of things you would have been like, oh, whatever, it don't even bother me. I find myself crying a lot. Like, yeah. And that's ultimately a sign of healing. You know, yeah. tears are tears are not always a sad thing. That's a sign of healing. Because I remember one point I didn't cry at all, and all that was was me masking what was going on with inside of me. You know, girl, you preach it to the choir. I promise you. you- <laughs> <laughs> it's like now, baby, I will cry, and I I did not have the capacity to be vulnerable because I didn't trust anybody. Exactly. So I didn't trust anybody with my emotions and I didn't trust myself with them. I didn't trust myself enough to have the discernment to be around the right people who I could cry in front of. And yeah. so when I stopped caring about that, baby, please, my mom, my mom and my sister like, oh my God, who is this person? I will be, we could be walking down the street and a bird fly back. Oh my God, God, you are so good. I'm crying. You know, it's See? just like, so signs, girl, everything starts to make sense when you mm-hmm. take out the negative and actually fill it with things that bring joy. And yes. Things that really make you happy. Like, when you think about it, drinking and all of that stuff at the end of the day, it's still going to be there. Yep. So as soon as you sober up, those problems are still going to be there. And so. it's going to have a head, and you going to have a hangover or a you know, headache for two, three days. Whatever. I ain't going to know what to do with your life after that. Exactly. So... I'm glad to hear that you're in therapy, though, because a lot of people, like you said, have that stigma of not wanting to, you, you know, know, 
to get help. So it's definitely a, a huge thing that you're doing that. Exactly. Do you think it's anything that you would share with, you know, with everyone, with, uh, your main points about like mental health and how to push forward with it? Like, yeah, I would say go in, go with it. Stop looking for things on the outside. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, for me, um, I, I like isolation a lot. Like I'm this social butterfly, but as I start getting to my healing healing journey and like, girl, what's wrong with you? Like get to the bottom of everything that's really going on within. Sometimes you gotta isolate yourself. You gotta you gotta get you right first before you're able to feel other cups. And with me, um, I would definitely require everybody to get counseled, even if it's not like physically going into a therapy session. Mm -hmm. Have that go to have your your tribe that you can sit down and break that down. I journal a lot. Yeah. So for me, journaling is very therapeutic. Um, I'm able to be private but transparent with myself too. So when I get into those days when I feel bad again, I can go back and I can say, well, how did I work through this? Or, you know, oh, that's how smart. was I feeling on that day to to be able to, you know, pick myself back up because I have my days still. It's yeah. days where I want the curtains closed and don't nobody talk to me. And in these days where I'm on the phone and I'm talking and I'm conversing with other people and I'm, mm -hmm. you know, being able to be social again because I feel my cup back up, you know? Um, and especially with the youth a lot. Like if you have a sibling or people that's younger than you, talk to them. I mean, everybody not just going to come forward and say, hey, I'm going through depression. Yes. You know, look at Robin Williams. You know, look at Kate Spade. Look at all of these, these famous people that went through it and they suffered in sight. Yeah, it wasn't true. It wasn't traumatic to anybody until they ultimately took their lives. I actually lost a, a little cousin to suicide, and it, it's crazy because Sorry she was twenty one. Oh, thank you. She was twenty one years old, and you know that's my little cousin. But at that time, I was much older than her. You know, I'm doing my own thing, and it's just like, dang, that's my little cousin. You know what I mean? I I wish that I had been more in tune with mental health and things like that yeah. to even see the signs and that doesn't necessarily mean that I would have but you right. know hindsight is always twenty twenty, so it's definitely yeah. important to not just think your mind somebody, thinking you could have said something to try to fix that situation at least to, to give her a, a safe space to yeah talk about it but at the end of the day God's will be done I, I can't change that yeah. um but like you said it's definitely important to know just because somebody's smiling and happy does not mean that everything is okay and I get that a lot. You believe it or not, I get that a lot. Oh, you're yeah. such a pretty girl. This and that. This. That does not mean we don't suffer in silence. And I used to like I literally used to internalize everything. I would I would let somebody do the you know the most worst stuff to me, and then I would not ever get a chance to vent or heal from it. It's like, okay, what's next? Right. You know. So for me, I want to be an advocate for a lot of young women. That's always been kind of one of my dreams is to like work with the youth. Only because, too, I was a child that went through all that at a very young age. Like, I can remember being back depressed since, like, seven. You know, and what do you really know about being depressed? But I can remember being sad all the time. You yeah. Know, wondering why me and what's going on in my world. Why they got this life and I don't have it, you know. So, baby. I want to save them while they're young so they can get to my age of 33 and your age. And we can be, you know, mentors to them and kind of, like, guide them down a different path. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. I, I honestly, there was a time where I wanted to do some mentoring. Um, they got me a little scared, you know. These kids is running up on. <laughs> Bur Baby, I'm not the right. I'm not the you right. One teacher. I'm not the right one for that. <laughs> I feel like she took it light. No, I'm just kidding. But um, girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I, I definitely want to pour into kids in general but i just think that young girls we especially young black girls are, are adultified and they they adultify us so much as kids it's like we are responsible for what happens to us we are responsible for what we wear like i'm i'm six i shouldn't Sexual have to be about every little thing that women especially black i can't women, help it like girls right i'm curvy Oh, I got big full lips. You know, I can't I can't help what I have. And it's like these perverted people out here in the world or these little minded people that mm -hmm. you know it it tears them up ultimately. I just watched um a Facebook video not too long ago, a 14-year-old girl girl prostituted. And I'm like, 
How does she that. know about it? Like, and she's a baby. Like, she literally, she was literally 11 when she started. So that makes me very sad for our youth. And she said she had her mom in her life, but at the end of the day, she didn't have a safe space that she felt that she could go vent and talk about. It. And she said her aunt did it too, right? If, I, yes. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Yeah. Aunt was, yeah. yeah, I watched that too. That's that was really sad to me. I don't have daughters, but I can just sympathize with how that must feel, you know. That little girl has so much emotional intelligence, though. Like but she was, was so smart. Yes, did you hear her? The way she vocalized and the way she spoke was very. You could tell that she's. I thought she was way older. Yeah, than what she was at the end of the day. Oh dang, yeah. it's it's sad, but I'm definitely glad that you are being transparent about it. That's the first step because that's, that's the only way. When we act like we don't have those things, that's when we can't address them. We got to hurt us more at the end of the day. Put it out there on the forefront so that we can start to tackle it. You know what I'm saying? One one exactly. piece at a time. So I definitely am thankful for you for coming on here. I you can girl, come back. I feel like it. big girl now. Can, I didn't talk about it. But you can come back anytime <laughs> you got some other mental health things or anything else that you want to talk about because you know, of course, my platform is about leveling Ooh. up. So it's not just about women's health. I do have you know other Ooh. videos that we could you know converse about too so either or yeah. but i i have enjoyed this conversation severely I too. Honey i'm proud of you too i want to let you know that you're doing a great job girl you be swaying thank on you. camera thank you thank you and i'm happy that we got um uh, other black women shining you know we out here doing something other than twerking on facebook so listen <laughs> okay tt is too old oh, baby these little balls be creaking anyway even if i try girl, as soon as i get out of bed in the morning <laughs> 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 you're so silly but yes thank you so much for being on here do you have any party words for the for the um for the guests i mean not the guests yes. for the the, the i just want to say wherever you guys are in life with your mental health is okay there's nothing too big that god cannot handle so mm -hmm. if you don't feel safe to talk to other people pray about it but it's really important to just get therapy and get your tribe and like have that go-to person so that when the worries of the world get on your shoulder, you can let it go. So stay and above water, journal, journal, journal. Start getting that in, in the healing and tap into your childhood. That's another way to heal. Definitely. The childhood be the problem, right? They be the root. It's the root yep. of the tree. It really it be starting when you're a kid sometimes. I mean, not every time, but a lot of times. Exactly. Well, thank you, hon. I appreciate you so much for being on. You're welcome. Anytime. We will. We gonna talk because I'm gonna yeah. get back on here. We gonna get you comfortable. We, you got some stuff. I to know, say, girl. Sis. I'm already like, okay. You got some stuff this. to say, <laughs> sis. You got some stuff to say. We need. We need your voice. We need your voice yeah. for sure. So we. I'm gonna talk to you after this. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you on my next episode. Bye. Bye.